Okay, we can see you, Andrea, so let me unmute your microphone. And as always, it's the first webinar with the company, so the goal is to introduce the company. So we would like to learn more about who you guys are, what you do, what your product is, how you promote it, and then obviously students will probably have a lot of questions, and uh, so we will have an opportunity to answer those. So okay. without any- Yeah, yeah, sorry for delay, I was on- uh, No, no, on we're, here. we're here. Okay. So since we don't know anything about the company yet, well, I do know something, but the students presumably don't, can we start with a quick introduction of the company? So whatever you think the students need to know, uh, Andrea, and I see your partner is there, so please go ahead and tell us a little bit more about yourselves. Yeah, so thank you very much for having us here on the webinar. Uh, so my name is Andrea Gilberti, I am the CEO of Matchflat, and uh, uh, here with me there is Flaviano Tarducci. Hello, uh, I am Flaviano Tarducci, uh, Business Development Manager of Matchflat. Uh, so we prepare a, a short presentation and we would like to ask you if we can share our monitor yeah. Yeah, sure, please. Yeah, go ahead. So there is a share button at the, the green one. So, yeah, we see it. Okay. Nice. Can you see our presentation? Yeah. The presentation, yeah. Okay, so um, we have some slides in order to introduce uh, uh, Matchplot. This is our uh, slogan. So data and technology for the business of our customers. Uh, so first of all, we would like to start with uh, a big thank you from uh, our team. Here, there is some picture of uh, uh, of uh, you know colleagues from uh, from our team. So that's uh, your whole team as of today. So I see what is it uh, five, seven, uh, eleven people. Yes, we we currently are in fifteen one five, uh, but some picture uh, are not in the in the slide since uh, since. Uh, uh, the last people entered uh, uh, this month. So basically, uh, we, we need to you know take picture with the blue t-shirt for uh, all the team. Only but with blue like t-shirt. The beard yeah. is almost a requirement, or at least a lot of people have. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> <All right. laughs> so thank you very much for, for your time. Uh, here, a short history about Matchflat uh, and uh, the three main, uh, you know, uh, uh, data which was very important uh, in our short history. Uh, we founded the company in September 2017. Uh, um, I am one of the founder. Uh, Andrea, to Andrea, just to clarify, Elia is not me, it's just a name, right? Yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> just to be sure that I'm uh, not. There is not a kind of uh, yeah, contradiction. Okay, go on, go on. Yeah, thank you for the specification. Uh, so, uh, the second founder is uh, Elia, which is currently uh, the chief financial officer of the company. And then we have Yuri, which is uh, the chief technology officer of the company. So, we funded uh, Matchplot uh, with uh, uh, 6,000 euro of investment uh, plus uh, one year of, of our time and personal skills uh, in order to arrive to the first uh, MVP of our platform. Uh, and uh, first, uh, you know, testing uh, the test uh, uh, from the commercial and marketing point of view. Uh, then in June 2018, so around uh, after one year, uh, we decided to open uh, uh, first uh, fundraising uh, and uh, uh, we found uh, two different people, which uh, currently is part of our board, uh, together with me, Elia and uh, Yuri. Um, the, uh, there is Mario, which is uh, a professor of different university here in Italy. Uh, we decided to join, uh, you know, uh, the project with Mario in order to, you know, be uh, to have a contact and uh, a strong relationship with the universities uh, around the world. And then uh, Andrea, which is uh, not myself, but our first business angel, uh, which is also an entrepreneur and decided to invest uh, 150,000 euro in June 2018. Can, do, uh, can, you, can you share with us what percent of the company was that? Like for 150K, uh, did they get like what, half of the company, 10%? Yeah, uh, in June 2018, the pre-money valuation was uh, 1.6 million. So we basically 
uh, offer 9% of the company for 150,000 euro. Uh, and during the second round that we closed uh, uh, in December 2019, so three, two months uh, two month ago, um, we opened uh, a new fundraising and uh, we basically um, fundraise uh, 1 million euro for 12% of the company uh, with a post money valuation of 8 million. And currently we have uh, uh, 57 shareholders uh, in the company. Andrea, how did you um, make this last uh, fundraising? Like uh, through yeah. know, like funding or some other yeah. operation? Mm -hmm. We decided to use uh, a crowdfunding platform called okay. 200 Crowd, uh, which is an Italian crowdfunding platform. Uh, because we had some investors from our side, uh, we needed uh, some investors from the market. Uh, so we decided to uh, include everything in one uh, financial operation. And uh, we started the crowdfunding in September 2019 with uh, a goal mm -hmm. of uh, 300,000 euro. And uh, after three months and a half, uh, at the mid of December, we closed, uh, uh, we closed uh, the crowdfunding uh, with 1 million euro uh, of fundraising. So basically uh, three times uh, uh, the first uh, goal of uh, September. And so Andrea, so first time you basically gave up about 9% of the company and then the second time about the same. So does it mean that at this time about 20% of the company is owned by external shareholders and about 80 by the original founders? Exactly, yes, confirm. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, we are based uh, in the north of Italy. Um, currently, I go to the next slide. We are in the old office where we have 11 workstations uh, um, that uh, basically are dedicated for our current team. Um, but uh, since uh, we are in increasing drastically uh, the number of people inside the team, uh, we are moving uh, in, uh, within one week, basically, uh, to another office uh, in Bergamo, uh, which is 40 hours, uh, 40 minutes sorry, from, uh, from Milan, and uh, specifically is five minutes from uh, Milan Orio Serio Airport. So in three hours, basically, we are connected to all the European markets. Uh, and uh, so on the right, you can see the new office that we are um, uh, reorganizing in order to uh, you know, be ready in, uh, in one week or something like that. So one more question. So you're moving in a week in an office that has eight, basically can accommodate 85 employees. And so yeah. at this time the company has only about 15. So does that mean that you're expecting to hire about 60 more people in the next few whatever time? Yeah, by our business plan, uh, we would like to arrive to 50, uh, 55 people uh, by the end of the year. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, impressive. Um, so the new office is uh, 1,000 uh, uh, square meters and uh, we have uh, different uh, um, tables for different uh, areas of our team plus an auditorium that uh, uh, we will use for uh, on-site event uh, which is part of our marketing strategy in order to create uh, you know, uh, a strong relationship with our customers. Very impressive. That's that's going to be quite a growth. I mean, growing five times in uh, what in a year that that will be challenging. But good luck. Yep. Thank you. Um, so uh, entering uh, more in, in the business of uh, of our startup. Mm -hmm. So the need uh, that we uh, we are going to cover and we cover. Um, so on the left uh, you can see basically the problem we operate. Uh, uh, in the business-to-business -business market where basically companies uh, need to build a long-term business relationship and uh, usually they use uh, a solution which are uh, which require considerable investment of money and time with no guarantee of uh, you know finding the right partner uh, just to give you an example uh, the standard method that all the company in the B2B market use for uh, finding new partners uh, 
are exhibitions um, and uh, sometimes uh, there is some problems in the exhibitions because uh, uh, you can be you know an Italian company that is looking for distributor I don't know in the automotive in Germany and uh, you can decide to uh, you know uh, join an exhibition in Germany in the automotive field uh, you invest the money and time you go to Germany and uh, after that uh, there is there is you know the you have the chance also to not find the right partner so the right distributor for your business because probably this distributor uh, will not join this exhibition so this is basically uh, the different uh, aspect uh, that we would like to solve with uh, the solution that we offer to the market and in particular uh, we created uh, uh, platforms uh, and different services uh, that uh, can uh, do matchmaking uh, between companies uh, with less investment of money and time and uh, uh, having access uh, to the entire market. And uh, when I mean uh, having access to the entire market, uh, um, why we can do it? Because uh, we use databases and uh, technology, uh, uh, you know, on the base of our platforms. So I go ahead uh, with the next next slide so we can enter more in detail of our products. Uh, this is a slide uh, that show the role of Meshflat uh, in the market. So when we uh, speak with uh, our companies and potential customers, uh, basically we explain the importance of data and technology in the marketing field and in the sales field. And we try basically to move all the companies that uh, do not use data and technology uh, in their you know, strategy and marketing activity, uh, moving this company from a dangerous uh, position uh, to the uh, top right uh, area of the graphic, uh, so with uh, better performance uh, and uh, better results uh, in terms of marketing uh, and uh, sales activity. And, uh, what is our role basically? Uh, we have different platforms uh, that help companies to take decisions, to take, uh, uh, to image uh, their strategy and uh, to create new B2B relations uh, based on databases. But uh, instead of the standard databases that uh, you can find in the market, where all the companies inside the database uh, are classified by industrial sector, which uh, uh, in 95% of the cases uh, are basically uh, an information with, which uh, is not updated uh, and uh, sometimes it's also wrong because you have basically uh, the picture of, uh, uh, of a company at the time where, when uh, it uh, has been founded. Uh, through the evolution and the innovation of Matchplot, uh, we are able thanks to different algorithms, uh, to connect uh, the online sources for each company. And uh, we reclassify, reading automatically the information on the web, we reclassify all the company with up-to-date and correct information. So to have an overview of our data and our data. So sorry, Andrea, you use a mix of uh, big data and artificial intelligence, can we say like that uh, from a technological yes, exactly. point of view? We, we are in the business of data and uh, artificial intelligence uh, and we use AI algorithms uh, to, uh, you know, um, take information from the web, connect this information uh, to uh, the companies that we have in database uh, and uh, Thanks uh, to this uh, mix uh, between uh, data and uh, AI technologies, uh, mm -hmm. we, in our databases, uh, 280 million companies in uh, 196 countries. So we cover basically uh, mm -hmm. all over the world. And uh, we have a total of 30 billion uh, business information uh, where basically for each company, we are able to understand uh, through uh, algorithms uh, uh, the type of business of this company. So if the company is a producer or is a distributor, for example, uh, the list of the products uh, that uh, the company mentioned online, in the website or in the social network, uh, the skills of the company and the know-how of uh, 
of each company and uh, we, we are able also to uh, storage uh, and organize uh, other very important aspects of the company which could be also other keywords like uh, particular materials uh, that uh, they use in their process uh, uh, specific processes uh, uh, if the company have uh, social media profiles uh, and the location of the company. So, so Andrea, the countries that you are showing uh, are just some example or are those one where you have information? Because for instance, I don't see France or Spain. Just to understand whether these are just examples or... No, uh, example because we cover uh, all the countries in the world. Ah, all the countries in the world. Okay, these ones are just some examples. Okay, that's of so, the number. Andrea, then how do I use this information? So I can pay you money to get the information about all of those companies. And then what are the examples of the use of this data? How do your clients use them? So uh, from our side, uh, we have different partnerships, collaboration and uh, the relationship with uh, information supplier. So we acquire information, we acquire data and we reorganize all the data together in order to have our databases for our customer. Uh, the way where uh, we uh, sell this information uh, is through different platforms, uh, but uh, if you can uh, wait some minutes, uh, then Flaviano will enter in this kind of details, uh, which are basically the list of our products. Okay. Okay. So just to recap a little bit, uh, uh, you know, the metric aim. Uh, so metric aims to provide commercial data, analytics, and insights for businesses, uh, managing basically uh, a database of 280 million companies uh, uh, worldwide that we reorganize through artificial intelligence uh, algorithms. Sorry, did you develop this algorithm by yourself, or did you? outsource the development of the algorithm? Uh, we decided uh, to, from the beginning, uh, to develop uh, all the technology uh, inside the company. So in terms of make or buy, we decided to make uh, okay. the algorithm inside in order to have uh, completely, you know, the management. Control, yeah. <clears throat> okay, okay. So it's your own technology, let's say. Okay. One more question. So the data that you have in your database, is it all publicly available data or you have also some information about the companies that may not be found online? Uh, usually are public data. Okay, okay. So please, Flaviana. Okay, so uh, Vasil, to answer to your question, um, what type of services, what type of support we give to uh, our customers. Yeah. Uh, we, we make sure that uh, companies can have access to uh, new markets. Okay, so there are different services that um, through we can uh, uh, support our uh, customers. Uh, in the top left, you can see uh, the first, which is called Netflix Analytics. Uh, that is for those companies that don't know where to invest. Okay, so if a company doesn't know in Europe which one is the best market, if uh, they have to decide between uh, uh, France and Germany, what are the uh, criteria they can use? Okay, so Matchplot Analytics uh, is a tool that is uh, you can access 24 hours online, so you just need a device connected to the web, and uh, you can uh, put the values of uh, products and see the uh, financial uh, transaction transactions that uh, this product has from one country to the other. Uh, this is uh, working also uh, analytics to see the amount of companies that produce or distribute a specific product in a country. This is worldwide, okay? So we're still talking about big data. Then. So, so what I understand is, as a client, I would not necessarily be interested in a particular company in your database, but rather the whole picture, so right. I can see which countries have the necessary profile, the necessary businesses. That makes total sense. Okay. Right. That's okay. perfect also for Exculture, was it? Exactly, right? exactly. That's what I mean, <laughs> yeah. So I may not be necessarily interested in a particular company in Germany and what their social yeah. profile is, but to know that there are 
2,000 companies like that in Germany and only, let's say, 3,000, I mean, and only 1,000 of them, let's say, in Poland, that gives me very useful information. Yes, exactly. So uh, sometimes uh, customers call us, so companies call us saying, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to exhibitions, to fairs, I make uh, advertisement, I invest in marketing, but I can't find new, uh, new companies, new customers, uh, new distributors, uh, so can you help me? You know, when traditional uh, methods don't work anymore, uh, oftentimes uh, companies uh, contact us to explore uh, new solutions. So with Matchflat Connect, um, we support companies. Uh, for instance, if you're looking for a distributor of automotive components in Germany, uh, you can participate to exhibitions, and uh, maybe you can have the chance to meet some of them, or uh, you can uh, Google a distributor of automotive components in Germany, uh, but if this doesn't give you a result uh, with the Connect, uh, we can support you uh, starting from the data. So we begin by understanding your needs. So you look for a distributor in Germany, okay? So that's your target. We see the whole uh, uh, possible market in, in Germany of distributors of automotive components. Then we ask you to confirm that the list of companies we found uh, is the type of distributor you look for. You would like to be in touch with it. So we start uh, basically with back office activities like telephone calls and uh, emails to get in touch with the potential distributor. And when the potential distributor is interested in knowing you, we will introduce the distributor to you. So it is a warm contact, a hot contact, okay? It's not cold. Uh, Sorry, does it, does it provide information also about the competitors or only about the potential customer? For instance, you might find distributors, uh, uh, but I don't know whether maybe these distributors already are in contact with some other competitors that then might make your, I don't know, uh, plan uh, not so successful. Okay. Yeah, consider that uh, uh, currently Metflex Connect is used for six kind of uh, different collaboration. Uh, mm -hmm. Sometimes companies uh, use Metflex Connect to look for suppliers, sometimes mm -hmm. uh, to look for strategic partnerships, uh, mm -hmm. for example, for share a specific project, sometimes for looking for a distributor, clients, or to have an overview of the competitors, or okay. to have an overview of potential company to acquire or to be acquired. So for all the m and activities. Okay, so you offer these services separately, uh, like every services, I think uh, it's uh, separate and you, you define with the client what type of activity, they, their needs basically, and then you decide which one to offer, right? Yeah, yeah. when the, uh, um, you know, the, the question from the market is a standard service, uh, we use Metro Connect, otherwise uh, we use the service called the Market Research, uh, which is okay. the use of our database uh, through uh, a Metro Consultant, basically. Okay. So, yeah. yeah. Okay, so uh, as I was saying, Matchpad Connect is our uh, core product, our most important product, and uh, is uh, possible to access to Connect uh, through uh, online because it's a, a web platform, um, 24 hours. Um, another uh, service that uh, we developed uh, is Exhibition, and Matchpad, Matchpad Exhibition uh, is very simple. We uh, schedule meetings with potential uh, distributors in uh, at the fair, okay, at the exhibition. Uh, it can be worldwide uh, and it's uh, uh, just a back office, a pure back office activity. Um, market research instead uh, is uh, any other specific need that the customer might have, like uh, I'm talking about, for instance, uh, B2B intelligence. So when a company doesn't have uh, the, the list of uh, potential distributors of automotive components in Germany, but they have the time to contact them. So we just give them uh, the information. So uh, there are like, uh, I don't know, 200 distributors and uh, you can get in touch with them, okay? Okay, okay. Uh, so uh, we can see uh, a video showing uh, Netflix Analytics in function. 
uh, it is like a social media you can access with the email and password. In the home page, you can see uh, a list of uh, business news and you can input the product name, in this case is chocolate, uh, or the harmonized system code. Uh, in this case, uh, with the chocolate, the first thing you can see is the number of companies that produce or distribute chocolate. Uh, you can see in every country how many companies are uh, active in uh, the chocolate business. Uh, you can also see uh, the amounts of uh, export uh, from one country to the other. Uh, in this case, uh, we are just uh, using Italy uh, to uh, the value of export of chocolate from Italy to other four countries. You can choose the uh, time range. Uh, range. So uh, uh, we always uh, uh, take this information from official uh, databases access and we elaborate this uh, information inside. So in this case, uh, the result, the output of the result is a graph that shows every month the value of uh, export of Italian chocolate to those countries and with different uh, by uh, in the graph you have the, the possibility to uh, to see and show uh, the information uh, in a simple way you can also use this information to make uh, your presentations the same uh, uh, works for the import uh, uh, of the product and the last part of analytics is the list of the top 10 countries that imported or exported chocolate in financial terms. So Italy has been the top exporter in 2019 of chocolate. Um, last thing about uh, mesh product analytics, uh, I would say, uh, is that uh, there is a free trial. So uh, you can, uh, every, everyone, anyone can access uh, to uh, analytics, uh, from our uh, uh, website, so matchflat.com. Okay, so uh, Matchflat Connect, uh, as I was saying, is our core uh, business, and uh, with Connect, we try to engage, okay? It's a very active um, product. So let's see in the video the way it works. Um, again, access online 24 hours with a, a email and password. First thing we do after we access is to publish our own business opportunity, uh, which uh, is composed of a title. And then uh, there is a, a selection of the target. So in this case, we look for a distributor, uh, which is in the world sale trade in a specific country. Okay. Uh, we describe anonymously uh, our activity. So what we do, our company, uh, we explain uh, our strategy and uh, we define our needs. Um, the last part is one of the most important parts, the, the definition of the ideal business partner. Uh, this information are uh, confirmed with the match plot. Um, so once the opportunity is published, we use the text of the opportunity to introduce the, our customer to new potential uh, distributors. So uh, in the insights, section there is the possibility to see the list of uh, potential distributors that the matchmaker is uh, contacting. Uh, yeah, uh, if I can add some uh, information, yes. uh, the real value and the technology that we use uh, and when we speak about uh, artificial intelligence, uh, it's uh, in this picture. So basically the software is able to understand uh, the need of the customer, uh, the software will connect, uh, you know, the need coming from the customer to our databases and uh, is able to understand uh, the compatible companies uh, that our operators uh, will uh, contact uh, in order to create the match. But, you know, the targetization and the, the process uh, that we use uh, to uh, understand the compatible companies in that market uh, is done by artificial intelligence uh, plus uh, currently a department uh, composed by two uh, uh, you know uh, data that data analyst uh, that uh, check if the artificial intelligence uh, is uh, uh, with the right output yeah, so the human component is, uh, of course, always uh, important and present. 
Uh, so once the human component has done his check, the matchmaker calls the companies and receives feedbacks, uh, which is I'm interested or not. If I'm interested, I will send you a match request. So the distributor in Germany is sending the match request and you will see the anonymous will fall and you will see the information of the company and the uh, manager details. So business can begin, okay? So negotiation uh, can begin in this space. Okay, so uh, the last uh, product we spoke about, the exhibition, uh, as I said, is uh, uh, we just very simple. We schedule meetings uh, and you can see uh, a screenshot of the calendar that is being used to uh, schedule these meetings. Okay, so entering uh, in, uh, in the marketing uh, and sales activity, um, I will introduce two different slides regarding the potential marketing and the marketing strategy that we have currently here at Matchplot. Uh, in terms of potential market, uh, we are completely uh, uh, you know, open to uh, the entire market. Uh, and uh, a good thing for us is that uh, we know exactly who are our customers uh, because are inside our databases. Uh, here there is uh, a table that divides the company uh, based on the size of the company. Uh, also because uh, we uh, usually uh, define different strategy and different approach according to the size of the company. And uh, according to the size of the company, we offer also uh, you know, different uh, uh, products uh, with different uh, uh, you know, price strategy. Um, speaking about the marketing strategy, uh, one interesting thing is that uh, Matchplot use Matchplot for its marketing strategy. So we use different communication channels, uh, but at the beginning, uh, the analytic uh, marketing activity is done by the database uh, and the technology that we use here at Matchplot. So we define on a monthly basis uh, the market that we want to acquire. Uh, we have and we, we do usually an analysis of uh, uh, the target company that we want to acquire. And when we understood uh, exactly the company that we would like to convert in that month, we use uh, online and offline communication channels uh, in order to enter in contact to, uh, with uh, uh, these companies. So for lead generation uh, activity. On the left, uh, you can see the main uh, online communication channels that we use. We use Google for SEO activity uh, with uh, advertising and remarketing activity. Uh, we use uh, email marketing for lead generation and sometimes uh, we, we uh, define budget for uh, advertising uh, on targeted uh, blogs. Um, together with email marketing and Google, we use also LinkedIn and inbound and out, outbound calls uh, starting from our databases. Um, uh, speaking about social media, uh, we currently have all, um, only a uh, uh, social media profile in LinkedIn, uh, but uh, we are going to open also uh, a profile in Facebook and Instagram in order to improve uh, our social media communication. Uh, speaking about offline communication, uh, we use uh, exhibitions, uh, so we have different business partners and uh, uh, sales representative, representative um, from Matchplot that attend exhibitions uh, and usually we use uh, uh, the service Matchplot exhibition to make appointments uh, and meetings with uh, potential customers and um, second uh, uh, offline communication channel that we use is partnership with potential influencer so uh, professionals uh, that uh, uh, are you know famous in the market and can help us uh, uh, in entering this market. Uh, we have affiliate marketing program with uh, web agency, banks, uh, chamber of commerce, uh, or sometimes also consultants. And uh, uh, another coming soon activity is the on-site events uh, that uh, we will start to use uh, in the new office uh, according to the space that uh, uh, we will have.
Andrea, sorry, uh, what is uh, the main distribution of your customer at the moment as regard uh, the size of the companies, uh, the industries, and also, let's say, the geographic areas, just as a curiosity? And what is your also target future from this side of, yeah. from this point uh, of view? Currently, uh, according to the products that we have uh, and we offer to the market, uh, uh, the target company is uh, uh, the SME, so the small and medium businesses. Uh, in particular, if speaking about geographic area, 90% uh, of our turnover uh, from 2019, speaking about 2019, comes from Italy and only 10% from uh, other markets, which are in particular India, uh, UK and Spain. Uh, one of the focus of, of uh, the next two years uh, is, uh, you know, to invert uh, this uh, uh, this uh, statistic, uh, having uh, opening uh, uh, different markets uh, from uh, from the world uh, in order to start an internalization uh, process uh, that can help us uh, in uh, you know having different markets uh, with uh, uh, standard revenue month by month. Okay. Yeah. Speaking about industry, uh, we don't have a real statistic because we we, we are working in different uh, um, industry. Uh, probably Flaviana, you can add something yeah. about industry. Yeah, I and see. Leverage. I see a difference. Uh, if you if you uh, discuss with a customer coming from a textile field, chemical field, or uh, uh, food and beverage field, uh, they have a different. Uh, um, approach to technology and uh, I think and I, I, I'm also happy to say that in uh, in the food and beverage field in Italy we're very strong uh, there is a it's very open to this type of technology and we work very well uh, especially with the uh, wine producers being in Francia Porta Brescia <laughs> mm -hmm. okay so it's, uh, yeah of course so it's related also to some made in Italy activities, let's say, so industries. Okay, there was uh, Francesco Urbani, I don't know. Yeah, I added it. Francesco here yeah. to our uh, panel. Francesco, if you want to unmute your microphone, go ahead and ask your question if you want to go live. I'm not sure if Francesco has the microphone or not. The question is kind of complicated. Uh, Francesco, can you hear us? L let me read the question, so maybe. Yeah, maybe. because he didn't unmute the... Yeah, it's microphone so we, we can read it for him if it doesn't pass. well anyway the question reads are you offering the possibility to make a company to be first suggested partner in exchange of money basically paid promotion like google in which you pay to be the first result when you do the search are you currently providing a service for which you update your customers in there for a meaningful change in the supply chain so basically can i pay you to 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 be more favorably displayed in your database yeah, um, no, uh, for the moment, uh, the business model is completely different. So uh, the, the customer pay to have access to the database and we don't have preference uh, and between companies inside the database. Uh, this could be a possible business model for the future. It's something that uh, uh, we brainstorm different times, uh, but for the moment, uh, uh, all the companies uh, inside the database are the same, uh, you know, important importance. Right. So there is no promoted content. All, all, yeah. Like the Google in the first early days or Facebook when when they just showed everything without any what is it ranking or whatever they call it. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I would add since we are not a searching engine, right. Place, uh, we, we cannot list companies in terms of how much they uh, they pay, and also if you want to pay to show yourself uh, better in a, in a result, it means you're looking maybe for visibility or customers. So I would say you can use exhibition or connect to do the same thing. Right. Uh, Stefano asked a very good question. Uh, so the information you have could be very useful for the exculture students. Uh, I assume access is not free, right? So it's not something that our students can easily access and just use the data in your database for the research they do for exculture. Uh, well, I think that uh, we need, of course, to check also the, the, the legal relationship, the legal aspect of right. our 
with our supplier, but I think that could be very important uh, uh, and could be very interesting also uh, to use uh, our information for inside the program. So I think that uh, in, regarding this aspect, we can do something, uh, of course. Yeah. Uh, Basil, when I uh, was uh, approaching Andrea the first time where we had the discussion, I was suggesting him also um, the uh, business of um, universities because, uh, of course, uh, uh, as a scholar, as a researcher, we are always looking for data. Universities are yeah. always uh, looking for a database. At the moment, for instance, one of the two biggest databases that are used by universities are uh Tom, thomson reuters and also bro van dyke yeah. and uh, i don't know if uh, uh for instance that uh, this huge database which includes uh, several information and uh, besides having just the data combined the big data with artificial intelligence can be also something that uh, in a nearby future university might be willing to pay for having mm -hmm. access to i don't know mm -hmm. if you agree with this point and also andrea if you agree with my uh, this consideration, for instance, if you have well, thought about it. Just to add something about uh, uh, the, uh, the companies that you mentioned, it, uh, um, the output of our company is uh, a little bit different because uh, we usually don't, okay, we usually don't uh, uh, show uh, thousands of companies uh, inside the database, mm -hmm. but uh, having uh, AI technology, we understand your need uh, and uh, we show you all only uh, the, the companies that uh, are yeah. compatible for your potential business. And yeah, uh, that, that's how it is at the moment. But uh, did you think about the, this alternative option? Because you, you are able to provide also a list of company once someone feature for the country, industries, years, and so on. So it's something that you might potentially do. I was just. Uh, uh, asking if uh, this could be one uh, interesting uh, uh, option for you, or, or you have at the moment it, it isn't. Say. That's my. Well, to, could be a development of our company. Uh, consider that uh, having this, uh, you know, information and uh, yeah. uh, and data are you know difficult because you have to manage uh, also legal aspect with different suppliers. Uh, so uh, give, if I need to. To you know, answer your your feedback, uh, your 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 idea uh, and proposal. Uh, the answer could be: we need to understand different aspect uh, legally, from legally point of view and from yeah. strategic point of view. But technically, uh, it's not a problem because it's something that it is our starting point. Basically. Yeah, indeed, indeed, indeed. Yeah. Okay. One big question I would like to ask. So we are almost out of time. But um, so looking at the challenge uh, that you guys presented, so you are asking for some competitive position analysis, selection of the new markets uh, for your services, market analysis, and so on and so forth. But still, um, without getting into the details of each of the eight uh, or nine questions, that, that, or in fact, 12 questions, I guess, that you asked the students to work on, uh, what would be your request or preference in terms of what the students should focus on? So for the next few months, there will be, I don't know how many students will choose your company, but I, I, I assume it will be hundreds, if not thousands of them. So what would be of most value to you? What should they do so that at the end of the semester, when you look at the reports that the students present to you, you would look at it and say, oh, this is very useful, we can use it. So what would you like them to focus their attention and energy on? Yeah, uh, that's different points between section one and section two. Uh, in the section one, which is related to the marketing analysis, uh, I think that one of the, the very important uh, aspect for us is to understand uh, the competitive position analysis, uh, because uh, we uh, are starting to do different, uh, uh, you know, study, internal study, but we, we are not so many people and uh, we can cover partially this need of the company but uh, you know having the need to go ahead Italy and uh, start an internalization uh, process uh, it's very important for us to understand uh, the competition for each market. Mm -hmm. uh, one second very important topic uh, uh, inside the section one is the point number four so the market entry mode so it's very important to understand for each market the competitors and uh, the best uh, 
uh, you know, strategy to enter inside the market. Uh, moving from section number two, um, the the point uh, uh, the point uh, uh, five. So the promotion channels uh, in the slide that uh, we have seen some minutes ago, we saw some minutes ago, uh, we, we, we saw basically different channels. This is our current strategy, but uh, we know very well that uh, if we move the strategy to another country, the distributor channels and the communication channels uh, uh, will uh, you know, change. So it's very important also to understand uh, the best promotion channels uh, uh, and uh, potential, uh, you know, um, return of investment for each channels. And I think the last one is uh, the price stra pricing strategy uh, for each market. So uh, very important also to understand for each market which is uh, the right price that we need to uh, right. yeah. define for each product. So mm -hmm. if I see that the word. I, and uh, I divide the word in different markets. Uh, very important to understand for each market uh, the competitions, uh, the right entry mode strategy, the right pricing, uh, and uh, uh, the, the right promotion channel for each market. Right, that makes perfect sense. Um, I think, um, Stefano, did we go through all of the questions? It looks like we've answered all of the questions that we had here. Um, yeah, so we. we we are going to stop here, but um, we have another webinar scheduled for um, April, right? And so what will happen is the students will start working on the project today. So we will form teams a little bit later today. And um, uh, I assume there will be more questions. As they arise, we will add them to the database of questions and we will forward them to you if it's a new question or we'll answer them using our own records if it's an old question. What happens in many cases is that we get literally hundreds of questions, but most of them are repetitive. And so you are busy people, we don't want you to waste your time answering the same question over and over again. So if we know the answer, we will use the old records, but if it's a new question, we will reach out to you by email. And then by April, the students will have been working on it for a while, and so probably we'll have more questions, more ideas, we'll probably want some feedback from you. And so that's when we will have another webinar and so hopefully at that point we will be able to continue this discussion. And then sometime in early May we will have the reports. I hope it will, they will contain a lot of good ideas and business leads and we'll, we'll see what they, the students come up with. So, all right. Okay. Well, thank yeah. you so much. Is the coronavirus affecting your business at all? You are right there in Northern mm -hmm. Italy where they shut everything down, isn't it? Uh, from the economical point of view, uh, I think yes, because there is a lot of companies which are closed or in smart working. Uh, but from the business point of view, I think yeah. in the next month, uh, you know, uh, there is also a lot of exhibitions that we are going to be closed. And uh, I think that Meshpad could be a, a good alternative, a digital you know, alternative for... Yeah, actually, you're right. Yeah, I mean, when the face-to-face -face meetings cannot be happening, people have to yeah. go online, so... Yeah. All right, well, thank you so much, gentlemen, and thank you everybody for attending this meeting. Thank you. The recording will be posted later, and um, yeah, let's see what the students come up with. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Stefano, for putting us in touch with the company. Thank you, thank you very much, okay, for organizing. Okay.